Welcome back to the Road Trip Podcast. We have an amazing episode for you today. But first, some tunes to brighten your day. What's up, Nick? How are you? Good. <laughs> Nick is a successful entrepreneur. He's going to be telling you his story on how changing his fitness approach up to uh, Keto Body transformed his his uh, his results with his work productivity. And uh, Chris, and what's going on, man? His income. Yeah. yeah, double your income. Double your income with Keto Body. Yeah, with Keto Body and a little Cortagon. Cortagon, yeah. Keep you focused. Keep you, f- keep you sharp. So, so let's uh, let's get, turn the music off. Let's get down to brass tacks. So, so Nick, uh, let's talk about a little bit about your story, uh, what you do, kind of uh, for work, and kind of some of the struggles you had having to uh, balance um, uh, working out and then um, working. Yeah, sure. So. Uh, My job, I've been helping software companies for a while now uh, grow, like uh, high growth uh, software companies. And I have a company right now called Fund. We help uh, software companies raise money. So in the early days of uh, starting a business, it's very demanding. You're working like 80 hours a week. Uh, It's very stressful. And um, obviously you can't be working out five days, six days a week because all your energy will be gone and you need that energy for solving problems and building a business. So the keno body, the three days a week, the flexible dieting, it's really killer. It, it meshes well with that entrepreneur lifestyle because you're not tired all the time. You don't need 12 hours of sleep every night. You only need about seven or eight. Um, so it works really nicely if you're starting a business you're trying to solve some problems. Yeah, what'd you do before you found this what are you doing oh, okay well i was playing um i was playing hockey uh, all the way at, since i was like a little kid so i was d- doing workouts like that and then i uh, started lifting weights in university i went to queen's uh, university in canada just did engineering there and uh, i was at the gym like six days a week with my buddies uh, doing the bro thing yeah. and skip, like the skip. chest chest on one day yeah it back. was like yeah it was like chest 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 and tries, back bars, back, back shoulders, bars, shoulders legs, legs, and then R- like then you, you then you go back and forth. Yeah, and then maybe one day off. Yeah, like and it was like you're sleeping all the time. You were sleeping yeah. until 11, 12. Uh, you're eating morning. six times a oh, day. Oh, you're eating at the cafeteria. You're eating like crazy amounts yeah. of food, and you're like just trying to get big, and you know you're you're spinning your wheels, um, and you're always exhausted. And, yeah, it's fun when you're doing your at university, but if you get out into the real world and you do that, then you're not going to get anything done. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, you need to have ben- like bandwidth available to. Yeah, you need bandwidth. Get shit done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So then I met Greg a couple of years ago, and um, he introduced me to the Keno Body thing, which is it's only three workouts a week, and the best part is that it's not a lot of volume training. Like I think your what was it your uh, your Warrior program what the the war the warrior shred program it's a lot of um high intensity training yeah right? like, like heavy lifting like heavy lifting yeah right? so heavy there's not lifting. a lot of volume so you're with the, correct me if i'm wrong you leave the gym and you feel you don't feel exhausted when you're done your workout you yeah. don't feel drained you feel so pretty pretty strong and powerful yeah like exactly. when people do my workouts what they'll say is like greg like are you sure i'm doing enough i feel like i can do more i'm like that's the point you're leaving on that on that high like you still take over the world and then that's what allows you to come in stronger. If you leave the gym completely trashed, then not only do you like, or do you have less mental energy and focus and willpower to devote to, you know, your business, your job, your career, other skills and tasks, but also it takes a long time for your body to start to, to recuperate, to actually to capitalize on those strength gains. Right. Exactly. And you made you made a really good point, and I think this is one of the fundamentals of your course. It was. If you're not getting stronger, you're probably not getting bigger. Like mus- muscles yeah. a byproduct of strength. Right? Exactly, yeah. So this way, like it's very clear, if you're not gaining strength in the key movements, then why the heck are you even working out? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so yeah, many guys just go through the motions. And yeah, I know. Like, like why even do it? Why are you doing it? Right. You're not getting any result. Some guys yeah. are in the gym six days a week, one and a half, two hours a day, <laughs> trashing themselves doing set after set set after set after set and then it's like dude look back three months ago you were still lifting the exact same weights yeah and you're devoting so much time and energy to this i know it's insane like yeah. why why do that like it's a clear indicator of progress it's strength like you yeah. can't bs it 
right? It's, so if you're gaining strength, that means you're, you're improving. Same thing with business or if you're an investment banker, you know, you're going to have some metric to make sure that the decision yeah. making and the effort you're putting in is paying off. But if your main indicators of, uh, of growth are showing no results, it's like, dude, you better try something else. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So I love the way that you put it. It's kind of like metric driven working out. And you did, um, I think you, you had a template. So it was, if you were doing, what was it? Your body weight over the head press. Yeah, for right? five reps. That's for like, five that's reps. like, that's like the oh, yeah, highest that'd be, that'd be level. Right. And it was, what was the metric? The strength standard. So it was like, yeah, the strength standard. Like what was good, the chest one? Great. Uh, uh, chest was like, it's one for incline. The incline was like, you know, it was like one was like good. You know, 1.2 was like, uh, like great. And then, uh, and then like 1.3 is like, that's like when you're, you know, that's like the level, like that's like uh, the level after, and then like the like warrior level is like 1.4 or something. Yeah, 1.4. I remember for me it was 235. 235 for five. Yeah. For five. Yeah. Yeah. And like those are clear metrics that if you're not hitting those metrics, then you're not in good, like you're not in the best shape that you could be in, right? So the cl it's clear metrics. There's, you can hold yourself accountable to that template, and. Um, yeah, your program actually focuses on getting strength, like stronger, mm -hmm. and every week you're getting stronger, which is pretty, which is pretty awesome. Because that's what I found. Like for for guys that are that are completely natural, that's the recipe for for achieving your physique goals. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's you know, if you're if you're you know, there's people that take tons of drugs that hold a lot of muscle size without having to lift very heavy. Yeah, you know, you, know, you you see those guys that are in the gym, they're huge, and you're like, wait, this guy's only curling like. 35 pound dumbbells yeah this guy's only and we see this when chris and i you know we go to the gym we're lifting some heavy heavy weights we're doing 105 yeah. pounds are strong dumbbell presses and then yeah. we see a bodybuilder is 220 230 next to us he's doing like 70 pounds yeah. and then it's like oh it's because you got all the if, all those oh, if 70 pounds <laughs> if 70. Yeah. Probably a lot of, a lot of those guys do like 60s like yeah yeah but, like but yeah. those guys it's a completely different situation they're just pumping their body completely full of drugs yeah. Um, but when you're natural, that's the that's the, the indicator of, of your physique. And, and what I've what I've um, what I've kind of figured out. And then once I once I learned this, once I've once I realized this, ever, achieving my physique goals were so much easier, especially it would have been like 2015 when I was like really pushing my body hard on this and uh, I wasn't going out as much and all and all that. Like I really doubled down on this this strategy and I got in insane shape. Yeah, absolutely insane shape. Yeah, it's focused. It's a focused approach, and you're focusing on getting stronger. Like even the, even now, you're like Greg and I will go to the gym, and you're like, "Oh, I'm trying to get my uh, incline press up to 275 or 280 for five. Like you're still super focused on yeah. on those lifts, and it obviously it's, it's still working for you. Ten years later, or however yeah. long, you, however long it's been, it's still working. You're still gaining results. So. Um, the strategy is it, it actually does work, which is uh, which is awesome. And there's another kind of like there's another kind of benefit as far as the kind of the physique type, right? That we're that with Kino Body that we're really double like focusing on. Um, yeah. And it's you know it's 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 great in the uh, you know the business world when you're rocking that suit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you have if you have like that sleek chiseled James Bond kind of physique, that hollow physique, you wear a suit, it looks good. Yeah. If you're wearing dress shirts or you're wearing suits. Or some sort of like business casual stuff, you don't you don't look you don't need to be a big balloon. It's funny. It actually will hurt you if you are super puffed up and you're like super jacked in that environment because guys they know if you're that jacked you're working out all the time. You must not be very good at your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it actually hurts you. You know, so it's a it, negative connotation. Yeah, it's, it's just like why are you so? Why do you have so much time to be working out? Yeah, imagine you know? if you imagine yeah, you're gonna you, go and like, yeah, if you go if you, down by my office, you see all the bankers, you see everybody. Yeah. They're the, the the most successful guys. They're they're lean. They're lean. They're wearing crispy dress shirts. They're in really good shape. They're light. They're strong, you know. They're like yeah. the, the the warrior. They're not these big gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine if you're investing all your like a ton of money with an investment banker, yeah. and the guy's this big balloon guy. Oh no way! <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> unless yeah, you're selling, you're like... unless you're selling supplements. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, all, yeah. There's yeah. Only, yeah. Unless you're selling like <laughs> like your protein powder, yeah. then I don't think it's gonna work for you. So no. Yeah. The, the, 
the, the business, if you're doing a lot of business stuff with professionals, then yeah, the beefed up look doesn't really work, especially, and even with girls too. You yeah, know? I've heard that from women. You've heard that too. Yeah, they're like, Go- well, well, if the guys are like way too big, then they think that that guy's going to give way more attention to his diet and his gym routine yeah. than, than to her. Yeah. And they think that it's an insecurity. I think it's a compensation thing. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. saying that's always the case, <laughs> but no, I've, I, I've had girls tell me, you know, and, and you, if you ever go on Instagram, and if you ever go on Instagram and you like you show a girl like some really huge pumped up big bodybuilder, they're just like, no. Yeah, and girls are smart. <laughs> like the the most attractive girls, they they usually have some social awareness, and they know if the guy is spending his whole week at the gym, then he has n- not much else going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, you it's know? just a natural. So they're asking the same question that a a business person would ask, but why is he in the gym so often? Yeah. Right? Like, if you're north of 25, like, what are you doing? It doesn't communicate a lot of value. We were (laughs) talking about, like, value and everything with uh, Vince Del Monte yesterday Mm -hmm. recording. Yeah. And that kind of plays into the same conversation of, of, like, communicating and demonstrating value as a man. Yeah, exactly. But that almost works against you. If you're way too big and it's, obviously that you spend all your time doing just doing fitness then that doesn't communicate much value right because it means you, you like you said nothing else is going on yeah exactly no i agree 100 percent. unless you're a fitness model or it's your like your full-time job then it doesn't really make sense and, yeah. and the cool thing is is like if you have that lean to the, to the look you can spend a lot less on a suit but you're, it's going to look like a two three thousand dollar suit but if you're yeah. not in good shape or you're maybe you're just uh, muscle bound and overly bulky you could go buy a five thousand dollar tom ford suit and it's gonna look cheap it's still gonna look off <laughs> it won't even fit <laughs> it yeah. won't even fit yeah yeah, yeah. we get a cut yeah it, it, it won't even look that it won't even look that good yeah yeah exactly um another big thing with the keno body thing is that your your weight doesn't fluctuate like crazy so right. when you're doing the bulking and the cutting and the bulking and the cutting, your weight goes up and down and your clothes never fit because you're, right. you're either like you're too big or they're too tight. <laughs> so yeah. with the keno body. And when you're buying yeah, suits, that's not yeah, good. Yeah, when you're spending like a thousand bucks or whatever on a suit or two thousand bucks on a suit, then you don't, you want it to fit. You can't, yeah. you can't like. You want it to fit for years. Yeah, you want it to <laughs> last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, this is my fat suit. Or this is my suit. <laughs> this is my little suit. Yeah. Like the bulking suits over here. Yeah. The bulking suits, yeah. the cutting suits. <laughs> exactly. But like with, oh, the, with Kino Body, I think the most the weight will fluctuate is like two or three pounds a year. You right. know? And it's only if you're gaining some muscle, right? If you're relatively right. lean, then you, the only, you're only going to gain a couple pounds a year. Like well, that, that's when you've already hit that, that when you built your first 20 pounds of muscle or whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So for guys listening that maybe they haven't put on much muscle yet, you can gain more than, you know, you can gain, you know, maybe 10, 15 pounds of muscle in a matter of, you know, five oh, yeah. months. They're not but working out. Yeah. Yet, like, yet, like crazy. Then they're going to get a lot of, uh, a lot of yeah. results. Funny thing was like, I was probably 175 and then when I, I dropped to 165, but I got way stronger. Yeah, you which got leaner is, and yeah. fuller, which is like crazy, right? Yeah. So it, it's interesting, and then you get that V taper, that yeah, the, exactly. And the V taper is like powerful, actually. But even with suits, what they do is they try to accentuate the shoulders because yeah. it, it makes you look more dominant and masculine. Um, but it works even better if you actually have the V. Yeah. If you have, if you have if the you V, the waist, the v, the sh- yeah. yeah, you get the suit will hug you really nicely, and it's in your face too. You're really lean in the face. So you look mm-hmm. good in a nice dress shirt and a nice suit. You don't look like a big balloon face. You know, you look healthy. You look, uh, you look good. Right. And did you ever have, uh, were you ever, when you're, you know, working these 70, 80, 80 hours, like very high level thinking work, um, in the past, did you ever do like the, you know, the, the six meals a day where you're constantly eating? Yeah, of course. And it knocks you right out. You spend all your energy digesting the food, right? So yeah. you have a lot of carbs or something like that in the early morning or early afternoon. You're just you're lazy and you can't can't focus, which is which is which is really bad if you're trying to do something that requires a lot of brain power. Mm. So what I noticed was with the keno body, the fasting in the morning is is it really helps. Just it gets you into state way faster. 
Right. You know, like you get into work and you're just like, all right, well, I got nothing else to do. Let's get to work, right? You're mm-hmm. not out getting a croissant. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you don't have and to. And then go. the funny thing is, in the morning, if you do eat that first croissant, you're kind of still thinking about food for a while. Yeah. yeah. You, you want another croissant. Again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> another hour later, you're hungry. Yeah, you're like hungry. exactly. <laughs> But it's, yeah, you're, you're way more focused because you just wake yeah. up, you're like, okay, get some water and you get hydrated and then you're yeah. off to work and you get a, co- a coffee or yeah. whatever in you and you're, you're focused. And then at 10, you I think you call it a strategic fruit snack. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> strategic fruit snack. <laughs> yeah, strategic fruit snack. Yeah. Which is at like 10 or 12. Yeah. And then you have uh, a, a 500 calorie meal around yeah. two, three. Yeah. And then that pushes you all the way to dinner and then you can have a nice big dinner. And that's good for you because, you know, a lot of times you'll do uh, client dinners or you know, business dinners and stuff and you go to these nice restaurants. Yeah. And so if you're following it, maybe, maybe, you're, maybe if someone's cutting and they're following the conventional five, six meals a day, when you get that dinner meal and you're out maybe with, uh, maybe it's a date, maybe it's a business dinner, maybe it's a, a dinner meeting. Yeah. And you go to a nice restaurant. You're like shit. What do I get for 500 calories right. at a nice restaurant? Right. And then you're that guy that's like, okay, you, you don't, you can't have as much fun when you're when you're restricting yourself so much. Like, okay, I guess I'll get the, the chicken salad with the dressing on the side, and I can't get a drink, so I'll just get like water. And everyone else, they got steak and yeah. potatoes and and old fashions, and they're laughing, they're having fun. You're like, oh, I wish Greg I could just eat more. It's like I, I just pictured 10 Greg sitting around a table, and then some <laughs> <laughs> dude with a chicken salad. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. it, like miss it. Well, I I know because in the past when I used to like restrict myself a lot, like at dinner time when I was younger, I couldn't have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's it's pain in the ass. And if you're if you eat during the day, and then you do go out for dinner, and you get roped into having that big, you just, like get offered fries and you get offered all this other stuff you end up eating way too many calories yeah you know? and you and have to be like oh yeah, tomorrow i gotta burn yeah. it off or whatever i gotta well, it's you know, a- something impressive about it, like it, whether it's in a date or a business scenario about someone who just eats a ton of food and he's lean especially if they're in shape yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a good point chris they love yeah. it yeah yeah because yeah. like <laughs> any well it's greg does it all the time yeah. We go out in, in LA somewhere <laughs> yeah. in Hollywood at like some dinner with like a bunch of like producers or whatever, and then fucking Greg's sitting here ordering three dinners, and, <laughs> and it's a power move. Cause like this guy spent yeah. a lot of money on yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, he just, and he just another... ate way more than everyone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, I have another buddy who he's a he's like a, a movie star, and yeah. but he's like ripped and, and super lean. But I, he does the same thing. Yeah, he orders two dinners. Well, yeah. two dinners. And it's just this power move. <laughs> it is a power move. Dinners. Every time we go out for dinner, the waitress is confused. She's like, she's like, are are, are you sure you want two? <laughs> He's like, yeah, two steaks. She's like, she gets confused. She's like, what? And then yeah. she's then she's game on. Oh yeah, then she's yeah. sold. She's cooked. She's sold. She's like this guy is in shape. He's having two steaks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, it's it's it kind of like le- leads this this mysterious aura around someone who yeah. does that too. Yeah. It's, it's like you're in really good shape, and then you're eating two dinners. Yeah. yeah. And people are like, how the hell? It's is like, what did you do today? Some kind of secret. Yeah. Know? And a lot of women, they're like naturally nurturers, so they love. Oh, they make love guys yeah. feel good. That's or, a good yeah. point too. You know, yeah. if they like, if they're cooking a dinner. And you're that guy that's like just having a little bit, they feel offended. Yeah. But if you're the dude who they're eating like, everything, they like, love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Women that know that a guy's gonna eat a ton of food, they love that. Guy. They love yeah. it. They love it. Uh, if you stay stay in relatively yeah, good if shape. You're not fat, yeah. yeah. If you're super yeah. fat, then it just doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. <laughs> they might love you, but they might not want to. <laughs> They'd be like, date right, you. you might not want to eat. <laughs> two steaks tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just do one, honey. Just one. <laughs> oh Let's man. Mix in a salad. Yeah. yeah. You should probably not eat two steaks at every meal from time to day. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that was too funny, man. I don't. <laughs> so, so I mean, that pretty much paints a good picture and applies like how all these fitness strategies that you know Chris and I are talking about the podcast and our programs, um, pretty much is pretty damn effective if you're a working professional yeah. if whether you if you maybe you're an actor you're on set all day or you're you know an investment banker or you're building this business and you're putting in all these hours yeah you're traveling yeah. you're any, traveling like any anyone who's actively like going out pursuing their goals getting shit done yeah you don't have time to just sit and eat six things six meals exactly. a day and meal prep and everything yeah what i learned was the difference with kino body like mm-hmm. if you look at it you're not the first one to do uh, reverse pyramid training, right? right? You're not the first one to do fasting, right? You're mm-hmm. not the first one to do calorie deficit, yeah, right? So those things have been done, but the way that you have organized them, you like, 
you integrated it all together so that it's super easy to do. Like you made yeah. it extremely easy to do. Like if someone was just gonna go try fasting, it's hard, right. right? But you gave them a strategy to make it super easy to do. You gave them a strategy to make it super easy to gain strength every single week. Right. Which is, it's, it's really hard to do that. Like you've spent, what, 10 years figuring it out? Yeah. Right? There's no one else that does that. They're all preaching this, this stuff that is completely off. You backed it with science. And at the end of the day, it, 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 it's really easy to hit those fitness goals. So it's mm -hmm. just the way that it's organized and the, the plan, if you follow it, and you're gonna be able to hit the goals. So that, I think that's the key value of Kino Body. It's just that the way that it's organized, mm -hmm. you know, that's why, you know, it works. I love it, boom. And one of the cool things also I noticed, and, and you might be able to attest to this, Chris and, and Nick, is that uh, when you lift like the three days and you, you go heavy and you focus on the strength, if you ever, you know, maybe you have a, a huge work week or your vacation and you're like, you know what, let me just take the week and just stay out of the gym and just work all week. Your muscles stay the same pretty much. Yeah. yeah. They don't have that fluctuation from when you do all, when people do all the pump training every day. Right. You know, I remember in my gym when I was in university, there's one guy, um, like I think he'd work out like for a few hours every day and every day was like there's chest day and then there's arm day. And so on his chest day, his chest would be huge, but his arms were small <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and on his arm day. Yeah. His arms would be big and his chest would be small. Yeah. It was all like the, it was all like, it was like a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bubble. And then, and then he would wear sweatshirts, and I it, bet, on leg day. Sweats, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I bet you, like, if he took a week off the gym, he would deflate. Oh, yeah. He would deflate, yeah. Yeah. He'd yeah. be like, like poking a hole in a balloon. <laughs> yeah. And then before he goes out, he does a bunch of push ups or something. He does a bunch yeah. of push ups, yeah. yeah. Like, when I did some of these fitness shoots with these other fitness models, I, uh, when I, you know, they would, uh, they would all be like, doing these bands like eating like some like <laughs> some specific like food to carb up Drinking and like wine and doing the butt yeah, yeah doing everything and i just go and i'm like what the fuck are you guys doing what are you guys yeah. doing yeah. <laughs> like what do you mean you're not gonna pump up i'm like no i'm fine yeah <laughs> good i have muscles i got muscles <laughs> yeah <laughs> damn it i worked out three weeks ago yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah at this point <laughs> yeah but then people get stuck in that trap though, because they, uh, cause then it, it, here's the pr problem is that when you've been lifting like light weights and doing the pump training, you're scared to, to take a couple days off the gym. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm going to get smaller. But it's like, somebody's got to take one step back to take 10 steps forward. Yeah. So it's like, Hey, relax. If you have to be in the gym every day to see that muscle, is it really fucking real muscle? Mm. Probably not. So take a step back, Focus on the strength gains, drop the volume a bit, and then it, then you'll surpass that level you were at before, yeah. and then you won't have to be a slave to the gym all the time. Exactly. I think a lot of guys miss the purpose of going to the gym. Like, why are you going to the gym in the first place? Mm -hmm. It's probably to look better, feel better about yourself, maybe attract the opposite sex, yeah. right? And if you look at some of the, what the guys are doing, it's they're not actually achieving that result. They're not looking better. They're not feeling mm -hmm. better. If it's not yeah. working, then you should change something. Right? right. Like people get, I've talked about this before. Chris and I talked about this in our, our, our first podcast, um, uh, is that people get goal hijacked. So they initially have this strong goal of, of what they they have the strong goal of what they want. That's they want to look, yeah. yeah, they want to look awesome. They want to look like credible. They want to have that, that, that instant attraction. Yeah. Um, they want to be you know strong and fit and they want to be able to have fun too. They don't, people don't go to the gym to get to, to be in the gym all day. They go to the gym so they, they can actually have fun in their, their yeah. outside the gym. And then they meet the guy at the gym who just cares about working out and then they start competing with that guy yeah. and then they yeah. all, all of a and sudden they like, have to, yeah, they wrong detour. Yeah. And they get yeah. obsessed with how much they can squat or something yeah. or, you know, they're, they're, yeah, you know, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Some, something arbitrary and they're like, wait a second. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, the same thing happens in, in every, it's like the whole why thing. Yeah. It happens in business, relationships, all that. People just either forget or they never knew why in the first place. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that's why when I first started uh, building Kino Body, it like, it stuck. Like people were like, they, they stuck onto it really easily. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I want to build a physique like a Hollywood actor and be in the gym three days a week and have fun, you know, and be able to mm. eat big dinners. Yeah. But yeah. The, the best thing is you, that's your marketing, right? Yeah. But it actually delivers. Right. Right. Like yeah. I work yeah. with, it actually gives you that. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's a lot of people out yeah. there that, that yeah. that's their marketing, but it doesn't live up to it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I work with startups all the time. I talk to about probably about 10 companies a day. They're all yeah. trying to build the next big thing. And at the end of the day, the companies that do well, it's the, those who have really created something that provides value, right? Like, mm -hmm. so I always say, like, if you're gonna sell peaches, make sure your, your peaches taste good, 
right. right? So you spent 10 years making the peaches taste good. Right. You know, like you banged your head against the wall for 10 <laughs> years trying to figure this stuff out. You went through all the research. This was like your one thing. Yeah. And then you figured it out. So when you do market it and you do spend money on ads and all this stuff and you get it in the hands of people, it actually delivers. That's why the business is doing so well. You know, right. you're not selling BS. This stuff is actually. And that's why our customers that have stuck on for years and years. Yeah. yeah. There's this new there's this new fitness company that's trying to rip off our, our marketing strategies. Yeah, V Shred. V Shred trying to rip it all off. They, they literally ripped the whole funnel. The whole funnel, the whole yeah. strategy, the, the everything. Are, yeah. And they hired some actor to do the videos, pretend it's his 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 strategy. And then it's probably there's probably selling some cookie cutter thing. Yeah. But um on their whole Facebook page, there's always all these angry customers because <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't stuff. work they skip, yeah. they, they skip the step of doing the 10 years of yeah. research right they skip that same thing yeah. with chris with chris and his testosterone business is yeah. he he's it, that was his issue he for when he was at duke, duke university he had extremely low levels of testosterone so he figured this out for himself yeah years that was my of, one yeah that was my one thing that was your one thing, thing yeah. like yeah. seven or eight years he wasn't like yeah. oh my god this testosterone business looks looks like there's a market let me just no. you know i didn't even want it i literally <laughs> fought against it you probably remember yeah. like back even after I wrote the book on it, I f didn't want to do it as a business. I was like, oh, it's a book. Like, I just want yeah. to sell it as a book and, you know, mm -hmm. make yeah. some side money and whatever, but I want to do other and business. It, yeah. You that's know. that's what you want to look for. Like, I, I would never, ever want to compete with you in testosterone. You know way more than anyone else in testosterone and the mm -hmm. supplement stuff. Same with you, Greg. I would never, ever in a million years want to mm -hmm. compete with you in a, in a fitness company right like when you're looking at companies you look with you look at founders with really deep domain expertise right right and that's one of the clear signs of success it's really deep domain expertise and uh yeah you guys have it with the the, the truth nutra and the keno body so that's right. what there's no, there's a reason why this stuff works right? yeah and that's what i say when i give people advice on that say oh hey I, like i love your fitness stuff i want to start my own fitness brand i'm like well do you have something to share that's really unique? Right. And like, do you have a strong message or do you just want to kind of take what other people are saying and then build your own platform based on that? Cause that won't work. No. You know, there's people, yeah. that, you know, if you have like some, if you have some, if you're like a genius marketer and you're going to rip kind of people's different stuff off, then you can get initial momentum. It will never but last. It won't last no. because once you get a bad reputation, we've seen this happen with other companies. There's tons of, yeah, in the yeah. marketing circle. What, yeah. You see <laughs> it all the time. 90% like of these guys. Once, yeah. you, once you have that reputation as being like the kind of the scammer or kind of like not being able to deliver, then, then, you, then you're done. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why most of them never show their faces either. Yeah. They hire the actor or whatever. Hire the actor. The, or or the there's a lot of people pulling the strings behind these guys that you see, you know, yeah. on uh people that think are, are running the show on the ad or the youtube channel or whatever but they're just like their little actors yeah. they just get recycled <laughs> yeah they get recycled all the time they get recycled yeah. uh that that yeah so it's so i mean that you gotta have that you know uh that's what it comes down from like that really strong passion for trying to solve something for yourself for me i want to build this amazing physique and have fun i remember what it felt like to try to cut fat and i was like i'm miserable i can't stick this damn diet yeah when you saw something for yourself and then you're like, this really works and you share it to people like, holy crap, these, this is working yeah. for these people. This is something that this works yeah. better than anything. Then when you start to build your, when you start to share it and market it, yeah. then it's just like wildfire. I can, I, can, I can imagine the story. Like I can imagine your story. You're 14, 15, you're working out, you're putting on weight. You go to university, you're like putting on a ton of uh, muscle. You're getting super strong, but then you want to get lean. Yeah. So then you're like, well, how the heck do I get lean? You started experimenting with fasting the starving the crash dieting the, the, the low the, the <laughs> low no carbs the, the, no carbs. the 1200 yeah. calories a yeah. day the 1500 calories then you do like some other <laughs> diet like the paleo diet but then you're like yeah. shit i'm doing this paleo diet but yeah. i'm still eating 4000 calories a day <laughs> yeah well because they said calories don't matter yeah, yeah. so yeah. not even bigger so this, is, this is what i imagine it's so frustrating this, i went yeah. through everything yeah. Yeah. yeah this is what i imagined okay this is this is like the spawning of keno body yeah you do fasting right yeah. you're like okay you read you probably read a ton of research on fasting you try out fasting but you're like shit fasting is so hard I need a strategic spruce <laughs> <laughs> and sparkling water. Yeah, and you're like, what? What will satisfy me right now? Like, you're probably just like going through the motion. You're going through the process. You're like, okay, maybe, maybe sparkling water. But let's try it. And you're like, okay, that worked for like an hour. Okay, black like, coffee, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, americano. Right, let's try americano. Yeah. Okay, that tied me up for another two hours. 
Okay, Apple. One more MR yeah. Cloud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one more. <laughs> the <laughs> Apple. And you just tuned it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it just, it, it worked. And then you're like, okay, well now I can have a steak at the end of the day because I understand calorie intake. That, like, that's, not a, that's not a new thing. Conservation of energy. The c- calories yeah. in versus ca- calories out, yeah. right? Yeah. So then, yeah, like the whole thing makes sense. But I can just imagine you. Uh, developing it, and then all of a sudden you have this easy way to. I'm like holy. <laughs> yeah. Then once I once I after I went through all those other, and I went through all those other. I didn't come to fasting until much later. I went through all those uh, until I was yeah. I got into fasting when I was 19. But before that, I was doing uh, the super low carb, the paleo, this that, um, and the six meals a day, and then and then uh, and then you know that was also when I was like 17, 18. If I was doing that now, I'd even get shittier results. <laughs> so when you're 17, 18, you know, you you're, can do a lot of things. And you're you're still kind of growing, right? You're at yeah. that age where you're still kind of going through. You're still maturing, so your body's energy needs are even a little bit higher. Yeah. But when you do it when you're 25 and everything, and you're running a business, you're sitting down like you know 10 hours a day. Yeah. It's like you start to you know you you do paleo diet and you eat 4,000 calories a day, and then you're, you're blowing up faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that was like the pretty much the like the kind of the, the process that I went through. But no one wants to do that. They want to just launch a product, right. ba- basically because they just want like oh, I just want to you know build a business. You know. Yeah, I don't think you had the intent of building Kino Body when you're going through all that stuff, right? No, like no. you just you just found something that really worked, and then you got it out into the market. Yeah, I was just I wasn't even selling products. I just had like this free yeah. blog for fun where I just write these different articles and yeah. And I uh, just kind of share what worked for fun. It was that was a way for me to uncover my approach. Is I'd, I'd, I'd share different articles and I'd, I'd share with people, hear their feedback. I'd be doing it myself. And then over the course of when I, 2011, 2012, 2000, when it was 2013, I really got dialed in. 2000, uh, uh, and that was also when we got the post that we met in LA. Mm-hmm. Then every year I, there, I got more and more dialed in, more and more dialed in. And then, you know, for the last couple of years, especially since 2015 and 14, that's when things were like, boom locked in place and then you know chris and i were always kind of sharing more stuff too yeah yeah so and keep growing it yeah hold it again keep growing it yeah so keep so growing. for those listening if you haven't started one of these one of these programs yeah um you're gonna want to go to kinojourney.com k-i-n-o journey.com there's a physique quiz i want to help find out exactly where you are so i can give you the best program of mine for you yeah so that, stuff. yeah boom check alone <laughs> I don't know why I say boom shakalum at the end. No, no, everyone's gonna start saying it after. Uh, I know. They're gonna leave the comment. They're gonna leave boom shakalum. Go comment boom shakalum on, on the on our uh, recent Instagrams. On our recent Instagrams and leave a review and then at the end of the review, five star review, hopefully <laughs> say boom shakalum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want to get 100 reviews that end up end with boom shakalum. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you so much. Talk to you guys soon.